So is Legend of Korra as bad as everybody's making it out to be? Let's find out. So today we're going to be talking about Legend of Korra, the infamous anime that follows up to our beloved Avatar The Last Airbender, the series that really did everything that it needed to and so, so much more. I really love my Avatar and Legend of Korra is basically the series that wasn't needed and probably wasn't wanted. I can imagine a lot of people really wishing for a, a follow-up series to Avatar The Last Airbender, but I can guarantee you what they had in their head, it wasn't Legend of Korra, I can tell you that. So I just want to get this out of the way and say that pretty much everybody is on consensus about this anime and saying that it is shit. I've seen several reviews of people saying it is shit. And I feel like I'm one of the few people on YouTube that does anime that really understands what a shit anime is because this is definitely not it. I've seen, I've peered into the abyss and the abyss has peered back into me and I've seen stuff like Super Kid, Dytron 5, I think that's what it's called, a bunch of Korean knockoffs. I've seen some really terrible anime. I go out of my way to watch the stuff. Call me a glutton for punishment, but I think it's kind of funny and I like to share the laughs with you all. But uh, this is definitely not a shit anime because I've seen it and this is definitely not it. However, at the same time, I'm not very motivated to put my usual amount of effort into this video because normally whenever I do videos, it's either a show that is good, even if it is a 6, I will still put effort into doing the video because I want people to watch it for a whatever specific reason. I want them to watch the show or if it's terribly bad, I want people to watch the video and get a good laugh or get a good understanding of why I laughed at it. So Legend of Korra, everyone's already made up their mind. Everyone's already seen Avatar The Last Airbender. If you haven't, then Legend of Korra has zero watchability for you. Do not even attempt to go watch Ava uh, Legend of Korra unless you've seen Avatar because there are things that are spoiled in it. You are basically just shooting yourself in the foot if you try and watch Legend of Korra without watching Avatar. But uh, pretty much everyone who, who has already seen Avatar has already made up their minds about it. Either they've decided that they do not want to watch Korra under any circumstances, they've decided that it's one of the worst things that they've ever seen, or they decided that it's just alright, and really I don't think what I'm saying in this video is going to change a whole lot of opinions about that, but I just wanted to catalog my experiences with watching the show. So let's talk about some of the major differences between Avatar The Last Airbender and Legend of Korra. First of all, everything. Uh, Legend of Korra is basically night and day in comparison to Avatar The Last Airbender. Everything is really different, and if you've never seen it, then, I mean, if you're coming into this expecting it to be Avatar The Last Airbender, don't, because you're really going to be disappointed by that. And I really want to push that point, like if you've never seen the show, which I imagine everybody's already made up their mind about this, if you expect it to be like Avatar, you're going to be disappointed, but if you just lower your standards as far as you could possibly take them, I think there's some enjoyment to be had here. But some of the big comparisons between the two are that Avatar The Last Airbender is three seasons, each season is just a little bit longer than Korra, but all of the seasons actually tie together in one mass of story where they're doing everything at once. You've got Aang... Avatar Aang, who is adventuring across the world trying to master the elements while they're also at war with the Fire Nation, but Legend of Korra is four seasons, each season is a little bit shorter, and each season basically has this one major villain that they have to deal with, or a group of villains that they have to deal with within that season, and it doesn't carry over despite the fact that there is one uh, long story that is uh, carrying over between all of the series. I mean, all of the seasons of uh, Legend of Korra, it's definitely something that I feel is better in short bursts. Like, you can watch a season one week and we'll go watch something else, come back and watch another season. It basically works like that. Whereas Avatar, that is like a straight-up binge-worthy, just watch the entire thing and, and realize, like, hey, where did this beard come from, you know? Uh, it's one of those shows where you could just lose yourself in. Legend of Korra is definitely not that. The world is also very different in Legend of Korra as well, because in Avatar The Last Airbender, everything was incredibly Eastern. You had the you had the Southern Water Tribe, they were basically like Eskimos, which uh, doesn't really count in what I'm saying about it being so Eastern like that, but you also have the Fire Nation, which was basically like Japan. You had Ba Sing Se, which was the Earth Nation, or part of the Earth Nation that was actually very much like China, and all of that influence, I felt, kind of went away in Legend of Korra because even cities that are very memorable, like a lot of the Earth Kingdom, they've actually become advanced. And there's also various other kingdoms as well that are, uh, they're incredibly modernized. Like some of them look like New York, for example. 
but it's really something that I feel like the world has become homogenized here, and there's really no identity to any of the different uh, the different tribes or kingdoms. And yes, the buildings may look different, but it just feels like everybody's the same no matter where you go. Comparing that to Avatar: The Last Airbender, it's really like night and day because even if you weren't thinking about like the major kingdoms within Avatar or the world of Avatar. It's like these small little cities that you will go to. Everybody has their different culture. Everybody has their own country. Everybody has their own history. Everybody has just different things about their life that set them apart from everybody else in the series. Whereas Legend of Korra, it really feels homogenized. And this also uh, takes place, this also really shows itself and manifests itself within the combat as well. Because in the combat of Avatar The Last Airbender, you had these different schools of martial arts. Like you had the earthbending, for example, which was really a lot of very grounded heavy stomps and these very like solid moves that you had and then you had the air which was a lot of like very flowing like soft moving abilities that could allow you to get behind your opponent and fight them and then you had basically they were all various different forms of kung fu but within legend of korra i really don't see any emphasis on the martial arts itself yes they're still doing martial arts but it's just not the same and i really don't see any difference of style between the people who are using the different elements like say for example in the very first few episodes of legend of korra you'll see that they're actually using their bending as a sport you've got fire benders on the same team as earth benders on the same team as like water benders doing this sport and there's really nothing special about the different techniques that they use aside from the fact that they harness energy from a different element and that's something that was I really did miss coming over from Avatar The Last Airbender. Another comparison to Avatar The Last Airbender is that Legend of Korra tries to be much more mature in comparison to Avatar and I felt like Avatar was fairly mature for something because it started off being like a kid show for me but in the end there were romances, there were a lot of drama and just a lot of suspense that was going on within the show that really just that's not what I think about when I think about a kid's cartoon and Avatar really did go above and beyond there but Legend of Korra there's really nothing that makes me interested in the characters to really for it to even matter how mature the story is so this brings me to the biggest contrasting point between the two which are its characters and I mean Avatar The Last Airbender I love just about every single character in that show with the exception of Zuko's sister I thought she was an alright character don't think she's a bad character by any means but I didn't love her character like I loved Iro or Zuko Zuko had some great episodes for him everybody had great episodes but Legend of Korra I didn't like any of the main characters there I, did, I really didn't care about any of them and the only characters that I really was interested in the most were like either villains or side side characters like tertiary characters characters or carryover characters from Avatar The Last Airbender such as we had Tove, we had Katara, and we also had Eero there and they don't take up much screen time whatsoever. They probably get like 10 minutes of screen time in the entire series which is fine. I enjoy the characters because I enjoy Avatar but it doesn't have to be about those characters. I'm just saying that Legend of Korra to me had a major lack in terms of really any interesting characters there. I just didn't care about Avatar Korra at all. Like, the story starts off and it's just such a massive contrasting journey that they have to go on and I'm not looking for the same type of story when I come into a sequel here. Uh, of course, I'm going to expect something completely different because the Avatar cycle, uh, the Avatar is going to be somebody that's completely different than all of the other incarnations of the Avatar, but Avatar Korra her journey just wasn't very exciting because she started off practically mastering already water bending because she's from the water tribe, uh, already understanding fire bending and earth bending, and the only thing that she didn't quite get was air bending, but she quickly got that under her belt as well and I just felt like everything came too easy for her where Aang on the other hand he had to travel across the world and he really had to go through hardships there were times where he was basically putting his friend's life on the line so that he could learn some of these abilities not willingly of course he had to basically save his friends and that's when he learned how to use uh, earthbending for example comparing that to Korra she really had everything way too easy for it to be enjoyable I mean as a character she wasn't really that great but I feel like if they had spent more focus on the conflict that she was dealing with here then I would probably enjoy her struggle just a bit more but considering that she's already being learned she's already being taught 
these amazing bending techniques from just world-class teachers here and then she gets her bending abilities taken away or really anything she will get the avatar cycle broken and every time she gets into any sort of conflict all she needs to do is close her eyes a few glowy things will happen and 15 seconds later deus ex machina and victory ensues the only time that i really felt like there was any real conflict for her was when she was in the wheelchair in the beginning of season four i think where she had the mercury within her body and that part i actually like that where she had to go on this journey she had to find herself and and realize uh kind of like her meaning of life basically she had to go out she met with hope and everything so I actually like that part, but everything else, for the entire four seasons, there really wasn't a whole lot of conflict, it just felt like a lot of Deus Ex, and I felt like the parts that I really did enjoy the most were everything that was fan service here, which I think is probably going to be the biggest positive about Legend of Korra, which is all of its fan service. I'm not talking about sexual fan service, I'm talking about lore fan service. I'm talking about fan service to people who are hardcore fans of Avatar The Last Airbender because you get to see how the world has progressed. You get to see the influences of the characters in the original series, like say for example how you have so many metal benders now, all thanks to Tove. You have all of these laws that are implemented to stop people from, or try to stop people from doing blood bending ending which was uh, something that we saw created with an avatar the last airbender as well and you get to see so much influence from the original show carried over but with a twist of being aged for however long it's been since the uh, original show ended so even though i didn't like Korra as a character or really any of the other main characters like mako i felt like he was a really bland and just dry character i felt like uh bolin was just this goofball character i mean at least Sokka was funny i didn't find bolin to be funny he had the same silly factor to him but he really didn't have a whole lot else like even when he would try and be serious to try and protect people it still didn't come off the same way that they did with Sokka because Sokka he was a round character as Bolin was just static no matter what's going on he's always that same silly goofy person but with uh, with Sokka on the other hand Sokka really knew uh, when the chips were down he had to get serious and try and protect his friends he would do these things such as going on soul searching missions and just doing the training that he did like when Sokka went and he was training under the sword master in the fire nation that was a great episode but there's nothing like that for Bolin and he's definitely trying to be a Sokka analog here but there were a few characters that I did enjoy but they were side characters and this is why I say uh, this is actually a really important thing like if you're ever writing a story you have to build the world first and not the characters and I felt like the main characters in the story were built first and then the world was built next and then you had the side characters after that and that's why in most anime series or in many anime series you'll have villains and also side characters who are the most interesting to people but that's basically the same things that happen uh within Legend of Korra here because you had Asami with her father and the whole conflict within that because she realized how corrupt her father was and that was really interesting then you had uh the conflict of the two daughters of Toph, and you get to see their backstory with that. I really like those characters. And even uh, Alvira, I think her name is, I'm probably butchering that, the villain of the fourth season, or actually really any of the villains, the villains from any of the seasons were actually very entertaining people. Like you had uh, within the first season, the guy who was trying to take away everybody's bending ability and is trying to neutralize the world. And then in the second season, with uh, you had the conflict within the Water Nations, where there was this guy who was trying to instigate a war between the two. Uh, that was really an interesting little story bit right there as well. But I think my favorite part was probably season three with Red Lotus and Zahir. And I just thought that Zahir was a pretty cool character because he was like this evil like air monk. And I felt like it was kind of... I just felt like it was a bit contrived in how he was already such a high level of mastery within airbending, considering that he had just learned airbending so recently, but he had already mastered so many of the skills, even skills that nobody else had learned. Like, one of my favorite parts of the series was when he, or his girlfriend, or his love of his life had died at the hands of uh, some of our heroes here, because they were battling it out, and he had Korra on his shoulder, I think it was Korra, 
and he had this wind amulet that had this secret incantation to learn this special move and it was something like step into the void and just let everything go and it's basically like what Avatar Aang was doing in the first season and just releasing himself from worldly desires and he jumped off the cliff but he flew away it kind of felt like something out of the matrix the first time that we got to see Neo fly there uh, maybe that's just a bit of a fanboy in me for the first few times that I saw the matrix series but I thought Zaheer was a pretty interesting character but all of them had basically the same flaws in the story which was whenever you would get around to the part where they're supposed to be fighting each other for the final brawl it kind of cheapened the element because it mostly came down to uh, Deus Ex Machina like within the first season how you had just air abilities coming out of nowhere for Korra the second season and how you had uh, you had where she merged with the the positive spirit of the spirit world i forget the name of it off the top of my head right now but just created this giant energy form of herself and just blasted away the evil form and i gotta say you know the whole thing where they went to the spirit world i was totally on board with that because i thought it was really cool that we got to see the history of the avatars and honestly i would i think it would be awesome if we got like several movies that would be about each of the individual avatars. Maybe I'm just a big fanboy, even though I just saw Avatar. Maybe I'm still coming down from my high of just enjoying that show there. But I think that would be pretty cool. And I did enjoy that part where we got to look into the backstory of the lore and everything. But sadly, it hurt the story more than anything else. I felt like it came off as a really big black and white morality to it all. Whereas in Avatar, you had characters like, say, for example, Zuko. As far as like gray area villains get, he is probably one of the better ones. Like some of the episodes where you see where he's all on his own and he's basically doing some soul searching and helping people out along the way and whatnot. But uh, with the dark spirit and the light spirit of the spirit world there, when they got into this fight and Korra absorbed the light spirit and she turned into this big giant and just started using this big chest beam to blow away the evil spirit. It just didn't feel like anything I would want to see out of Avatar, really anything that is related to Avatar. It just didn't make a whole lot of sense. Now that I'm doing this review and really thinking about Legend of Korra, there were three main factors that allowed me to marathon through the show. It wasn't the story itself. It wasn't the characters. The main characters definitely wasn't them. It was mostly one, uh, me just being such a huge fan of Avatar after having seen it, or maybe it's just me coming down from the high of it, but everything that could be lore related or character related, anything that could tie into the original series, I was in love with that. Secondly, it was beautiful, the animation here, they did a really good job of that. And third, it was dubbed. So that's like the trifecta right there. It's just something that I'm interested in, good animation and also English dub. It's just easy to sit there and just blow through the entire series like that. Plus, I felt like they kept changing things up often enough that it really didn't feel stagnant despite the fact that I wasn't a fan of really any of the main characters here because each season, what is it like, off the top of my head, maybe nine episodes a season, it's really fast to just blow through everything and next thing you know, after a couple hours, you're already on a new villain. There's a whole like new story that's going on. So it really is, I feel like if they try to go after this long ongoing arc like they did in the original Avatar series and hey, I don't think that would be so entertaining and I might have not want to finish the series right away, but because they kept changing things up, it was really easy to just marathon that for me. So moving on to my final thoughts, Legend of Korra is definitely not a terrible anime, but I really find little reason for anyone to watch it unless A, you are a diehard fan of Avatar The Last Airbender, but in that case, I guess you could either read the comic or rewatch the original series and you could pick up more that you didn't pick up on the first time around. But just in case you do want to watch Korra, there's lots of lore here, lots of just seeing how things have changed since the original series, so there's that. Uh, of course, like I mentioned, the animation is great, it's got a good dub to it as well, and that's really like the main reasons why I could imagine that anybody would want to watch Legend of Korra. But aside from that, like even the villains, I like the villains, but they came off in the end just being very one-dimensional and just wanting, oh, I want to destroy the world, oh, I want natural order, I just want things to just be total anarchy, basically. And that's what one, uh, a lot of them wanted and it just wasn't uh, very good despite the fact that I felt that they were interesting characters. Legend of Korra, if I had to give it a score, I'm not really doing scores, but just because I said I would give Avatar a 10 in comparison to that, 
I would get a Legend of Korra maybe a six and a half, so it's definitely not a terrible anime. It's enjoyable for what it is, but there's really no reason to watch this, I feel, unless you are just kind of really curious and you want to see what all the huff and puff is about with that. So anyways, I feel like this review has really been all over the place because I sat down without really gathering my thoughts. I just wanted to get this video over with because I've got so much work on my plate, uh, working on my Noragami review after this. It's between Noragami and Nodami Contable. I got like six different anime series review, and to be honest with you, uh, Legend of Korra, I honestly didn't feel like reviewing this, but I thought I would do it just because there were so many of you interested in hearing what I thought about Legend of Korra, considering the fact that I had already seen it. So, what do you think about Korra? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to hit that like button and also subscribe. I'll see you next time. Hopefully, we'll be reviewing something a bit better than this. Later, everybody.